Will texting save the English language? I'm John Deere for Blah Blah, and today we're talking about texting, that ubiquitous form of communication using 160 characters of text. How is it affecting the English language, and is it a good thing or a bad thing? To answer that question, we have to look at how the English language got so messed up in the first place. Why are words in the English language so difficult to spell? Why are there so many silent letters, and why are the same sounds spelled differently in different words? As school children, we were taught that words are spelled mostly the way they sound. That's called phonemic orthography, which means that in the system of writing symbols, each symbol represents a specific sound in the language. So for example, with words like dot and got, Anyone who knows the alphabet can look at the symbols and pronounce the words just by reading them. That's even true for words you've never seen, like agastopia, which means admiration for someone's body, usually a woman's. Or cabotage, the right to operate sea transport in someone's territory. Or even the word oxter, which is a name used in Northern England for an armpit. However, the English language is filled with words that don't follow these rules. Common words like caught, said, says, and on and on. In fact, depending on how literal you demand phonemic orthography to be, many argue that most words in English are not spelled phonetically. The reasons for this are complex and go all the way back to 1066 AD, the Norman Conquest when William the Conqueror from France became the ruler of England and brought the French language with him. French is filled with its own idiosyncratic spellings and pronunciations, words that are hard for English speakers to spell or even say. By the 1300s, when Chaucer wrote his masterpiece, The Canterbury Tales, the language was so scrambled that scribes copying his original text spelled the same words differently, sometimes even on the same page, and from edition to edition. Then in the 1400s, England made English the official language once again. However, the problem only got worse. In 1476, a publisher named William Caxton set up the first printing press in England. He brought with him Flemish typesetters who knew nothing about English. They spelled words the Flemish way. That's how the word ghost became ghost with the added H. They also added letters to many other words as well. Since that time, there have been a number of concerted efforts to remove all of the unnecessary letters from English words. One of the more recent efforts occurred in the early 20th century when millionaire Andrew Carnegie funded an American effort called the Simplified Spelling Board. The group began publishing lists of recommended spellings of simplified words which removed all of the unnecessary letters, including words like color, which became color, judgment, which became judgment, and believe, which they spelled believe. As the board began to exert political influence to force people to use a list of 300 simplified words, Andrew Carnegie withdrew from the organization, believing that while simplified spelling could be encouraged and recommended, it could not be dictated to the public. Carnegie recognized that spelling must come from usage by the people and not from an arbitrary list of rules. And that brings us right to our subject, texting, and its effect on the English language. The effect of texting has been to turbocharge linguistic change. Whereas changes in usage used to take decades for even a minor change, now it seems to happen almost overnight. With its 160 character limit, texting requires users to eliminate any unnecessary letters that are not required to understand the meaning of the text. So for example, when you're texting, believe becomes believe, love becomes love, and you becomes you. Largely because of texting, all those many efforts over the centuries to simplify the English language are finally coming to fruition and at lightning speed. Already, many simplified English words have made their way from texting into general usage and right into dictionaries. 
So the answer to the question is texting saving the English language? If you believe that language is a living thing that must adapt to serve the needs of its users, then yes, texting is saving the English language. So text away, my fans. Text away. LOL. If you like this episode, please subscribe. That's what keeps us alive. You can also tweet us, which is a form of text, at blah 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 on Twitter. I'm your host, John Deere. As always, thanks for watching.